Hi everyone, my name is Ben Walker and I'll pre be presenting along with Chung Hong Liu on high performance NVMe virtualization with SPDK and the new VFIO user protocol. So we'll be covering today four sections. Um, the first is standardization of the protocol itself, which is new. This is being standardized through QEMU and in a library uh, called Lib Lib BFIO user. Then we'll talk about how SPDK is using this new standard protocol to emulate NVMe devices into guests. And then we'll close with uh, my colleague Chong Pong talking about uh, how we have implemented an NVMe client library and then some benchmarks. So I'll start a little bit with standardization. Uh, but first, I want to talk about some upcoming talks that will uh, occur later at this conference. Uh, importantly, there is a talk on the libvfio user library that is open source and available that implements a client and a server um, using the new VFIO user protocol. This one will be at the very end of the conference. I know this talk that I'm giving now is at the very beginning, so you'll have to wait. Uh, but this will cover all of the details about how the protocol works, uh, the current status of the enabling library, which is called libvfio user, and uh, a lot of the lower level details that we'll have to skip over here. There's also a talk on live migration support, which we'll touch on uh, vfio user um, also tomorrow on Thursday. And this will cover a lot of the details uh, about how to migrate VMs uh, when you're using VFIO user to present disks. And so we are going to talk about using VFIO user here to present NVMe devices into the guest. So with that, since I I'm going before the other talks, uh, some brief background um, on what VFIO user is. Uh, there is a need to emulate storage devices or many kinds of devices, but storage in our case, outside of the VMM. And the reason we want to do this is for performance, uh, for security, but also for uh, stability and resilience. Um, if the, the target process crashes, we need it to be able to fast restart and not take down the VM. Um, we may want to run the uh, emulation or the, the target uh, even itself in a separate VM. So this concept of VFIO user was initially conceived uh, as a way to emulate devices in a separate process or outside of the guest um, for disks. This was originally, the goal was we want to present virtualized NVMe devices into guests. But of course, VFIO user has gotten much broader than that use case. Now it can emulate any device type. So the actual VFIO user protocol, and again, there's much more detail coming up on this in later talks, um, is modeled after the VFIO ioctals, uh, because basically we want to do the same thing, except we're not sending ioctals, we want to send commands over a Unix domain socket. And so the other way to think about this is it's it's like vhost user, but it's not tied to vertio. So the, the protocol looks more like VFIO, and you can uh, do arbitrary operations to emulate a broader range of devices instead of just vertio devices. And so the protocol itself is agnostic to the uh, VMM. It's, this is not necessarily tied to QEMU. Anything can implement this. And, and we'll show a demonstration of you know a, a full end, end implementation that doesn't use QEMU at all uh, in this talk. Okay, so emulating NVMe devices. The initial problem statement was we want to present emulated NVMe devices into guests because the guests all have NVMe drivers built into them. You know, Windows does, the, the BIOS has an NVMe driver. Um, you know, any, any, of course, Linux does and, and FreeBSD and things like that. Any uh, operating system you would probably be running in a guest has an NVMe driver in it whereas they don't all have vertio drivers, uh, vertio block in particular. So the original idea was we want to present NVMe devices 
fully virtualized, but NVMe devices into the guest. And we need a way to do that. And so the guys at Nutanix and other places went off and found a way to emulate any PCIe device. Uh, they came up with several strategies and it's, it's sort of morphed over time to become BFIO user. And then they said, okay, now we, we've built a little prototype, you know, we're maybe emulating a GPIO device or something simple. Now we need code that knows how to act like NVMe. And so they, they came to me and the broader SVDK team and said, Hey, you guys know a lot about NVMe stuff. Uh, what can we use in terms of code to pretend it's an NVMe device. And, and my first thought was, well, NVMe over fabrics, which is, uh, you know, remote connected NVMe over transports like TCP or RDMA already requires the software to essentially emulate an NVMe device. There's a couple important differences, which is what we'll cover mostly in this talk. Um, and it already, the, at least the target in SPDK and, and also in the Linux kernel, um, they're already designed to have this concept of a pluggable transport layer. So NVMe over fabrics allows you to export disks over the network using either TCP or RDMA or fiber channel. And so the software is already designed to have a common layer and then a plug-in system for different fabrics transports. So the idea is maybe we can reuse all of this. So that's exactly what we did. We set out to make a new NVMe over fabrics transport where the transport is shared memory uh, with VFIO user. So the, the transport here is really shared memory between the guests and a backing process and a Unix domain socket for control messages. And, and that's what we'll, we'll cover the rest of the time in this talk um, is, is the problems with that and also the success we've had with that. So NVMe over fabrics unfortunately is slightly different than local NVMe. In particular, some of the initialization flow is reversed and I'm gonna get into that. So the first question we had to answer is, can we generalize the, the NVMe over transport plugin system that was already in SPDK to handle these differences? And fortunately, the answer is yes. So here's what it looks like uh, today. This is all checked into SPDK um, and is available for anybody to test out. You have a uh, QEMU with a guest running and it is running its regular stock NVMe driver. You know, whatever that guest operating system is, whether it's Windows or Linux or whatever, thinks it has a local NVMe device and it loads its NVMe driver. The device itself is emulated by the SVDK NVMe over fabrics target running on the same host system, just in a separate process. And it is communicating with QEMU to do initial setup, discovery of the device and all that uh, using libvfio user, which again will be covered in that talk later in this conference, uh, as both the, on both the client and the server side. So SVDK is using it on the server side here. Um, and the actual data transfers between the guest and the target and the uh, descriptors that describe, you know, I want to do a, a read or a write to the disk are also placed in shared memory rings. And so once the setup is done, it's all just a shared memory system. There's no system calls or anything like that. It's very fast. So this is all checked in. It's available for people to go check out in SVDK today and it, it works. Okay. So let's go into a little bit of the, the details about um, what we struggled with to get this working because that's the interesting part. Uh, in NVMe over fabrics, traditionally, there is the concept of a listener because uh, it's a fabric space thing. So something listens on a, an endpoint, you know, an IP address for TCP. And that IP address, um, it, it periodically attempts to accept new connections after it's listened on that IP address. And those connections become like the NVMe over fabrics queue pairs. Um, for a local NVMe device, none of this exists. And so this was all baked into like the general or the, the generic layer in SVDK and newer fabrics. Originally, you know, it assumed there was some listener socket that, you know, occasionally had to be pulled with an accept to find connections. It didn't necessarily assume it was a socket, but this, this model was baked into the generic layer. And, uh, 
Of course, that doesn't happen with a VFIO user device. There's only one Unix domain socket and it's not a listener, right? You're just, you just connect to it and you assume the other side is there and it's gonna send you messages. And uh, you don't have to pull for accept. There's only one, it's point to point. There's only one guest connected to your Unix domain socket per device. And so you're not doing multiplexing, you're not doing multipath, any of these things, these are all disabled. It's a local NVMe device effectively. So the first thing I do is sit down and, and generalize the concept of a listener to become an endpoint. And really we push down the, the idea of having a listener and having to pull it to accept new connections down into the individual transports because now they behave differently. And so each transport is doing whatever it thinks is right. Uh, TCP and RDMA are fairly similar here. They're both you know, IP based. Um, Fiber channel does its thing and uh, VFIO user is very simple. It just opens the domain socket and assumes somebody's on the other side. Okay, and so some of the other challenges are uh, with a local NVMe device, there uh, are register reads and writes that the driver is gonna make. Uh, NVMe by spec uh, defines a, a set of registers in a PCIe bar, and these are read and written. Uh, with MMIO during initialization time. And uh, so the main differences are with a Fabrics device, there's obviously no MMIO, there's no PCIe bar. In, in NVMe over Fabrics, these are replaced by something called um, a Fabrics property get or set command. Um, and so the NVMF target, NVMe over Fabrics target in SPDK understands how to process property get and set commands, but it doesn't know what an MMIO is. So fortunately, libvfio user, um, the way it does MMIO is we can create a thread blocked on a file descriptor on the target side. And that file descriptor will become ready and wake our thread up um, anytime the client does uh, an MMIO to the memory, you know, the memory mapped region. And so it'll wake us up and say, hey, they, they did a write, or they're trying to read from this you know, register this memory range. And we then take that and we generate a fake fabrics property get set command as needed based on it's a MMIO read or write. And then we send it uh, to the SVDK NV member fabrics target. So we basically translate it from an MMIO style operation into a command. Um, so these commands are inherently asynchronous, whereas MMIO, at least the read side, is uh, synchronous. So we have to, for MMIO read, have this thread block. So it sends the, the command to SPDK, which processes it asynchronously and completes it sometime later. But the thread that does MMIO has to sit blocked, just that thread, not the whole target, has to sit blocked until it gets a completion back for the read path. And then it can you know, return control back to uh, libvfio user, which completes the, the read uh, request. So this is not particularly fast, but fortunately NVMe only does MMIO reads in the configuration path, like the initial setup. Uh, for writes, it's a little bit simpler because MMO, MMIO writes are posted, and so you don't have to wait for the response. We, we basically say, oh, you wrote you know, four bytes to this offset in the bar. Okay, we'll generate a property set command, and we'll send it and forget it. The other challenge we had is that the, the set of registers that you're allowed to do an MMIO read or write on is a little different than the set of things that you're allowed to do a property get and set on, uh, just because local devices are different than remote devices. And so we had to add additional emulation. It, I think it was just two or three things um, to get this fully supported. All right, and then another major difference with uh, actual fabric connected devices versus a local NVMe device is the order in which they create what's called the admin queue pair. And so for NVMe devices, they have every controller has a single admin queue pair where you do administrative stuff. And then it has a, you know, a set of N IO queue pairs, um, you know, usually one per core is how people allocate those. And those do like reads and writes from the disk. And for a Fabrics device, 
you have to create the admin queue pair first because it's a TCP connection. And you can't talk to the remote side until you have at least one connection. So you create that first and then you read or write the properties, you know, quote unquote, which are like registers using that connection. But for a local NVMe device, it's, it's the other way around. You actually read or write registers in the bar first in order to create the admin queue pair. And then you can do other admin stuff with commands after that. So this presented a, a little bit of a challenge. Um, we're of course handling MMIO by sending commands on the admin queue pair, these property get or set commands. And they're doing N MMIO before they've created the admin queue. So um, we have to, what we do in SPDK on the back end is as soon as the endpoint is created and we say there's a, we're going to create a Unix domain socket and you should open it up. We just create the admin queue pair internally in SPDK. And it's, it's not mapped to any shared memory in the guest yet. So you can't send admin commands on it from the guest right away, but we can still send our internally generated property get and set commands uh, at the beginning. And so we just create one of those right away. <clears throat> we know we're going to get a bunch of MMIO um, to do configuration and we can send those on that admin queue internally. And then later on in the initialization process, when the guest tries to create an actual admin queue, um, it will say, here's my memory in the guest where I, I've got my descriptor ring of shared memory that I'd like you to look at when I try to send you admin commands. Then we take our internal admin queue and we point it at this newly mapped memory and say, here's where, really where the commands are instead of this temporary internal thing. And so this sort of works out the, um, this order of operations difference between fabrics, NVMe over fabrics devices and local NVMe devices so that we can still use the NVMe over fabrics target in SVDK to emulate these local devices. So that, that was probably the trickiest part of this whole thing. Um, but it, it actually worked out in a relatively small amount of code. So with those things, uh, it, it just started working. Um, you know, we got everything together and um, we pushed the patches to SPDK to generalize the transport interfaces ahead of time before VFIO user was actually ready. And when it came down to it, the final patch that went into SPDK to support VFIO user only added a new plugin. It didn't change anything else in SPDK. It was just add a file and you know, touch some of the build stuff so it gets compiled. Um, so this was great. This was exactly what we wanted is you, we just wrote a new, a new transport plugin and nothing else had to change. And so this, this generalization also, we think will be useful to us in the future, uh, as SVDK begins to be used in more places in particular as firmware on, on various, uh, accelerator devices, they're going to have other pieces of hardware, um, that will behave in various ways um that are nvme related um we may do a quick transport at some point uh, which will behave more like tcp and rdma but may have aspects needed from what we've done here uh and and ultimately svdk becomes a great nvme emulator and we have since used this to quickly prototype uh possible nvme features that we're thinking about adding to real ssd products uh, just hack it up in SPDK real quick, um, you know, and, and pretend you have the feature and, and see what it does, see how it behaves, see if we can use it. So it's pretty neat. Okay, from here, I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Chang Peng, who's going to actually talk about um, how we used uh, VFIO user on the client side so that we have an alternate client to QEMU that can connect to our target, primarily for our testing purposes. And then he'll close with some talks about uh, performance benchmarks, which is the exciting part. Thanks, Ben. So let's continue the rest of this presentation. Uh, the first is MME client library. As you already know that Kimu client is a Euro usage scenario with VFI user MME target. But we can also support the SPDK MME client with VFI user MME target. We have an client VFI user 
pizza library to provide abstract API to access the emulate pizza devices. And on top of this library, we added VFA user transport in MME client library so that users can use the existing MME APIs to connect with the remote VFA user MME target. Okay, let's see the performance numbers of VFA user MME target and we host the user block target. Uh, actually, we host the user and the VFI user target have different thread modeling. For we host target, the I/O is processed in unit of we host controller. That means for multiple I/O queues in each controller, all the I/O queues are processed in the same core context. While for the VFI user MME target, each submission queue can be processed in different Calls. Here we have an example to evaluate the efficiency of VFI user. We use a now BDEV and 16 VCPUs and 16 IOQs. The performance number of VFI user MME can increase based on the number of calls used in host. While we host user block is almost the same even you use four calls in the host. Here is another two test cases. Uh, the chart one tested four VMs using one, two, four calls respectively. You can see the performance number increase uh, linearly when used in one, two, four calls in the whole side. Another test case showed in chart two. We would like to compare the performance uh, with the host user block. For this comparison, we don't expect the VFI user MME will improve the performance a lot uh, due to the actually uh, similar mechanism. The result shows that the VFI user MME is a little, still a little slower than the host user block. So that means that for the outpass, we still have some work to do to optimize our processing for VFI user MME. Uh, and here is another uh, several test cases using the physical MME SSD as a backend. Uh, first of all, we tested Intel Optin SSD using SPDK MME Prof 2. The performance number hit the hardware's limitation. Uh, we will use this uh, performance number as the base number to compare with other test cases. Then we run SPDK MME Prof 2 inside the VM to test the emulated MME SSD inside the VM. And we can see that due to the pooling in, in mechanism in both the VM and the um, whole side, we can see that the performance number in the VM is almost the same with physical MME SSD. And finally, we run FL test cases inside the VM uh, using the native ME driver and the Vertical Block driver respectively. Uh, we can see that uh, for VFI user MME, we can get uh, 725 key LPS, while the warehouse user block can get uh, 786 key LPS. Uh, VFI user MME can reach about 84% of the physical MME base performance number, while we host user block can reach about 91% of the uh, uh, base performance number. So it's really very high and efficiency for the two virtualization solution. Uh, that's all for today's presentation. For any questions and issues, feel free to contact with us in the SPDG Select channel. You may find the information in spdg.io website.
Thanks for watching.